Hey Tesla fans, <laughs> it's Jay coming from you from Adam's Cave. Hey everybody, Adam and Jay here in my cave. We have some fun things to show you guys today. Uh, Jay, this here is, is almost like an autobiography. Yes. In, in four objects. Mm -hmm. Is that is that too much to say? No, it's pretty much my career thus far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on the left, on uh, the audience's right, we start with these goggles. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about these constructions. Talk to me about this one. Where this, do you, what does it do? This is a Magpie Eyes. It's literally just a fun pair of goggles that actually articulate a bit. There's a switch down here. You're just turning on the switch, it powers everything on, and then it's they slow. move. It wakes up. Yeah. I and thought it would be like a fun character thing. Like and I, you can see through this? Yeah, 100%. Can I put this on? Of course. All right. All right. Now, what were you watching when this came into your head? What was going on? Okay, see, this is the funny thing about this. Um, when I originally made the first ones of those, because those are the ones I made for Make Magazine, because of course okay. I, they put me on Make Magazine thanks to these... Uh, these fun little goggles. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing about it, it was during um, COVID lockdown. Yeah. And of course, a lot of things happened with COVID. And um, I was actually talking with a friend. Uh, one of our friends, our makerspace had sadly passed away. And it wasn't due to COVID. It was a strange incident. Uh, and I remember we did a Discord funeral where everyone's just online and we're paying our respects. Yeah. And... I just started tinkering and I just started putting stuff together. Like I had no idea this was going to work. I was just like, I want it... I wanted a pair of goggles that made me look like a very mad scientist. And it was just, I guess, something to keep my mind busy as we were like going through, you know, moments and step by step. And at the end, I had them done and I just put them on. And I just did a quick like recording yeah. and people loved it. And this was sort of your way of processing the grief mm -hmm. a little bit. 100%. It was just me like, I'm very hands on when it comes to things. Like I yeah. talk with my hands a lot. Yeah. Like when things are happening sometimes, and I just don't really know how to comp or feel. I would just start taking things and just start messing with them, playing with them. I would just start sticking things together to see what happens. And those came out of it. And I was like, these are so fun. They look like a crazy characters, like goggle set. Yeah. I love that. I mean, there's a way in which I, I, I'm still doing the same thing, processing my emotional states at the bench or, or compartmentalizing them so I can feel some sense of control mm. or some sense of balance, and then I can kind of handle the thing as it's coming. It sounds like this almost sort of just like burst out of you. Yeah, 100%. It was, in my opinion, it's my first really big successful piece Yeah. because it, it just got me so much attention, yeah. which I was already slowly building up my whole network and stuff, and then I just made these, and I wasn't expecting them to be that popular. I was like, oh, this is just something I like put together willy-nilly just yeah, for kicks yeah. and giggles, and they were like, people just love them. Well, and so people start to comment on them, and I'm oh, I'm fascinated by what happened to me when I was a young maker, and people were commenting on my work. I was surprised that they had an opinion about it. Oh yeah, did you find that? Yeah, I loved it. Though. I was just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I was like, oh, it's so cool. You should do this, do this, this, this. And I just like, I took all the information in. I just loved it. I wrote it, wrote it down. I am still planning upgrades for future versions of this. Yeah, yeah. And I just, it just blew me away. I mean, there's also a real, there's playfulness to it, but there is a purposefulness. Like your lines are very um, delineated, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're making the part exactly the, how do I say this? There's a, there's an aesthetic to every designer's yes. excursion. And I'm I, given that this sort of burst out of you, I'm curious what you learned about your aesthetic once this was once this was done. Well, it's funny thing about it, because like I'm a big fan of steampunk stuff, of course. Yeah, and yeah. like to me, steampunk is my happy place because yeah. steampunk is just the fusion of science and art. Mm -hmm. So like every time I'm like down or whatever, or I feel like that thing, I will go to a steampunk design just because it just brings out like both creativity, joy, hope. It just looks pretty. Yeah, yeah. So am I guessing that one of the upgrades you want to do on this is make these actual irises? Yes. Um, there's still an iris in there and like, uh, I'm not turning it on or anything. I can like force it a bit here. You can kind of oh, see it. Oh, it actually yeah. does? Wow. Oh, dude. It like actually does it, but like the servos I'm using for this one, because this one is such a uh, quick build, right, they're not, right. they don't really go around strong enough yet. I see, sure, sure. I've, and plus they have this like little issue here. I've noticed where it's a straight line, so this yep. right here blocks it. So yep. Yep. my future plan when I redo these is of course make this a little tint, you know, like bend it a bit this way. I can like push this over more, that way yeah. I can get more of the iris. What is this? Uh, how how long ago did you make these? I made those, what was it, when was the lockdown? Big 2020? Uh, early 2020, early March 2020. of 2020. Yeah, early 2020 is when I really like sat down and made those. That must have been 
Right, I see now, right? You make these in lockdown, you put them up, and all of a sudden you get all of this feedback. Mm. Feedback was what we were all craving yeah. mid-2020, <laughs> mid right? Everyone was on the internet. <laughs> Everyone was on the internet, and it was exactly like that. Okay, so how far after these beautiful glasses does this guy come along? This comes along, I believe I finished this one last year. So I have a history of building spider robots. Oh, you do? I have okay. a big history. You this have is a habit. Yes. Oh, I don't like anything staying the same for too long, so I always go back and make upgrades. Sure. Like, I don't just switch to new idea, new idea. I'll come back to an idea and be like, okay, I'll learn from this. Let's upgrade this. Okay, all right. So this is actually Aussie V13. Can we turn him on? Yeah, of course. Oh, he's adorable. Yeah, he's a little spider guy. So... Um, of course, I focus a lot on wearable robots, and yep. my first one was a spider, um, Aussie, based off of um, <laughs> the African folklore tale of the uh, spider god, Anansi. Okay. So that's why I got the idea for it originally, but then I kept making more of these, and now I'm up to version 14. 14? <laughs> this is number okay, 14. It's genuinely a habit. Yeah, I, it's a bad habit. I haven't broken it yet. I don't think I will break <laughs> I it. I don't think you should. I don't think you need to on this one. Hey, he's not actually mobile. His it's legs actually are not. disposable right See, now. See, the cool thing about the ball joint legs, this is how I got my idea for this, is yeah. when I originally designed them to be on my... Oh, let me put these down for a second. When I originally designed them to be on my shoulder, um, I had legs move, but then they kept kicking me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Which yeah. is really, really annoying after one point. So I designed this one to um, not have that problem by making the legs ball joints. Okay. And then the cool thing about this too is like I would used to take this and just put it on my head. Yeah. Like just cool and just set the legs in like a fun way. And since they're ball joints, they actually hold on very well, oh, believe nice. it or not. Nice. Yeah. So like I would just take it on my head and then like I'll just go out and just do stuff. I you know, just, just love the way he looks around. Yeah, he just looks around. It's like very, it's funny because um, I love human brain when it comes to general because we have such an imagination. Yeah. And all it's doing is panning. It's just looking back and forth. That's that it. Very He's not responding to anything. Not responding to anything, but mm -hmm. everyone else thinks he is. Yeah. Like I, I've done like video calls and like gone out and just had them on my head just for kicks and giggles just to see what people's reactions are. And I always get like, is it looking at me? Oh, it's cool. What's it doing? Blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. And then I'm just like, oh, it's just looking around. It's just no, you're, you're, it's a fashion piece now. It's funny that like you just sat there and wrote a little bit of code about mm -hmm. panning every X seconds mm -hmm. under these circumstances. Uh, and it really does feel like he's responding to us here. Yeah. He's like he's looking around and stuff, and that's why I like I love the ball joints too, because like thanks to the ball joints, it held, it holds really well at least with my hair. I'm not sure if everyone's hair works like that. I haven't <laughs> haven't had the chance to start going around <laughs> testing hair textures, but like having you know my hair like this on my dreads, I've just been like pull the tail down a bit, and I'm just like hey, you no, know, walk around with it. I'm curious. I notice an aesthetic detail here. I love his um, I guess thorax ish. Yeah. I really dig the shape here and its balance here. Um, there's also this like really interesting love-hate on the internet with spiders, right? Like half of posts about spiders are like, check out this monster somewhere in Australia. It's always Australia. And yeah, the other okay. half are like, check out the cutest little jumping spider I photographed in my garden, yeah, right? Yeah. And you've sort of met, somehow done a mix of both of these. I like spiders. Like I said, I originally did from the tails, but at the same time, spiders are like natural artists in their own way. Dude. They do the really cool webs. Like we all love Spider-Man. It's just we have that weird sense of like there are so many legs are so hairy that we instantly think it's dangerous. Yeah. So I guess that's like a old school Neanderthal thought from uh, generations. I had a spider phobia for years until we did that episode in which I had to get bitten by a spider. And uh, once I got bit by a spider, I was no longer afraid and I can climb walls. See, like I... <laughs> So thank, you. There. thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, so post the spider bot army that you're building. Tell me about this beautiful guy. This was... This is super elaborate compared to these. You've got yeah. a lot more aesthetic stuff, the wings going on. Yeah. Uh, sadly, this one doesn't work like it used to. It's a very... I wouldn't say it's old, but like this was my attempt at a one-day build. Oh, so it's a quick and dirty, blasted out kind of build. I literally sketched everything out. This was, um, this was a freelance uh, gig I had at the time. And I was like, cool, I just have to build a quick little robot. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to test myself for a one-day build. So I sketched everything out one day, CAD it one, the next day, and then put it all together. So technically it was a three-day build, but I'm calling it a one-day build. Hey, look, every, <laughs> every one-day build is a three-day build. So I tried to do my own version of um, Archimedes from um, the movie... A uh, Clash the Titans. So originally with this oh, one, now I see the uh, eyes actually used to turn <gasps> because they actually have like a servo gear in one of the eyes, and then the wings used to like open up from a servo pulling backwards. Right, right, right. 
and they would like open up and stuff like that. I have previous video when it was functioning, but of course over time of neglect for me not messing with it anymore, it just kind of like stopped working. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's part of the thing with a, with a, with a quick and dirty build mm -hmm. is that it's just, it's, Jamie used to say uh, when we did stuff for the show, if it breaks the moment we're done filming, we've done exactly our job because we've expended no extra energy. But when you have time to sit and solve these mechanical problems, do you have a plan to to rebuild him with some of the... Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I definitely... Like, I really want to build him for my own personal lab because I like how he looks. And I think I've been working with um, my friend Sean to get this very nice... Um, AI system going so I kind of want to stick it in this owl form that mm -hmm. way when I like walk in they can like talk to me and do like a whole like oh, nice. thing going on but the design wise this is very steampunk so like I oh. use oh see no no it works I've knocked this out it's, it's fine though because like now you can see like the servo oh in the okay eye. you've got this uh, uh, servo arm uh, uh, yeah uh, brooch in the middle there yeah and then it sticks in the thing and oh and that's the drive gear for this gear yep and then it oh. would just rotate each other and then just drive in a really nice manner I love his, um, these aren't quite Robocop legs, but they feel a little like the second Robocop villain, Kane, oh, in yeah. Robocop 2. Well, it's funny thing about it because when I was making this, I was watching one of your old videos where you were messing with your lights. Oh, so yeah. like, if you notice oh, you the use body- Oh, Lockline. Yeah, he's Lockline with some metal wiring in there to actually give it the strength. That way it can like hold itself up. Oh, I'm delighted. And then with these, it just, perfect. It didn't fall over. It wasn't like flipping or anything. And I loved it. Dude. And then after that, it was just mostly the aesthetic. So like, of course, I will use um, craft foam mm -hmm. and then I use, uh, it's the fabric paint that you use for um, like drawing on your outfits and stuff. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I love that because it's a little bit sturdier than normal paint. So like you can take a little bit and just do little drips around yeah. and then you can just paint over it and like smudge it and it just looks great and it stays, which is perfect. So it gave it this nice rivet steampunk look. You put these up on your channel and people respond to them. Mm -hmm. um, what do you say when people ask you for your STLs or your designs or the programming you use? I tell them you will have it, but you have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you do want to su oh, yeah. supply that. I am 100% open source. That's kind of one of my oh, big deals. Great. Even working with my uh, company I work now, work with now, DigiKey, was part of our deal. Is everything I make will be open source. Oh, that's wonderful. So all the coding, all of the the STL files and stuff like that. Sometimes I don't put it out right away just because there's some things I want to make sure it's crystal clear. Oh, sure, yeah. Because yeah. sometimes there's something wrong, or like sometimes I've like messed up on an STL file and then the file is like messed up, so I have to go back in and fix it. Yeah. But eventually everything always comes out. I'm just like, here, I want you guys to take it. I want you to learn from it. I want you to adapt to it. Like even using something like this, you might want to put like the lenses on this on like a, another robot for yourself. Right, right. It's perfectly fine. Like, have I, you learned stuff from what people have done from your executions? Yeah, especially uh, some people have done it better. <laughs> <laughs> sure. One person, I've you know, seen a fair bit of that in my time. <laughs> one person actually made one of my Aussie bots and he actually made the eyes with um, RGB LEDs. And I was like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, totally. It's when I was like, I just picked one color and was like done. And he was just like, oh, now I can change color and I can change it with my phone. And I'm like, oh man. I didn't think of that, man. So much. There are so many builds on the RPF where I'm like, oh, this build is really cool. And they'll be like, I was inspired by Adam's video. And I'm like, man, what they're making is so much better than what I made. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it's the thing though. Like I get euphoria from seeing people take my ideas and then apply it to their own concept. That's an endorphin rush for you. I love it. Because one, it shows that like what I'm doing is important. Right. And it's resonating. Yeah. And two, it shows that people are still learning. Yeah. Like I I went to art school. So like technically I'm an artist yeah. by trade. <laughs> trade. <laughs> but um one thing I've learned, at least for me growing up, was there weren't many people who look like me mm -hmm. doing this stuff. Yeah. And yeah. like one of my personal goals when it comes to it is I want to be that person for the younger audience. That so, drives you for your yeah. for your YouTube channel. That drives me for everything. Dude. So like yeah. when I see like they did Black Girls Code or when I see like yeah. um, kids look like me who are hopping into science, even if it's like for cosplay stuff, I still support that because yeah. it's yeah. just... If you see it, you can be it. Yeah, and it just, yeah. it yeah. does so much for like people who are younger than you. Like I love seeing kids' reactions to this. Okay, I, we've been saving this one for last. Let's talk yes. about this construction here. This one is my personal current favorite. Um, I call Project Helen. This is your current obsession? Yes. Now we can uh, slide this over. over here. All right. So this is Project Helen. It's a robot that I built inside of a backpack. Okay, so it's a combination of a backpack that you're wearing with a robot on your shoulder and the, the, it, the brain and the power are all coming yep, from all the back. all the back. Okay. 
So it's really a, a cat backpack that I took and I altered it because I was like, cat backpacks look like spacesuits in oh, my opinion. Oh, this is a cat. This is for to take your cat around. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You should take your cat around on one of these. I, Sorry, that's <laughs> <off> the camera. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. I, if I think about this, I found this at a, um, at a sale because it was, uh, what is those? A thrift store. I go okay. thrift storing sometimes. And um, this was on sale at a thrift store and it was just like kind of like beat up a little bit. And I was like, it's perfectly fine. Of course, it's like, perfect for you. You were like, I've got to build into this. Yeah, I was like, this looks like a spacesuit. Like, I'm going to take this. So, like, I took it and I started like, I spray painted this on it, started 3D printing some stuff. Oh. I tinted this with yeah, some spray yeah. paint. And then I added these little switches down here, which are what control the robot that is on the shoulder. But um, the reason I call it Project Helen was because the part was very expensive. It's using something called the OpenMV, which is like pocket facial recognition and pocket like easy uh, machine learning. So this thing here has facial recognition built in. Mm -hmm. No way. Okay, can we turn it on? Yeah. Tell, so, me, tell me about its functionality. That is awesome. We have to turn it on in sequence. So it's okay. the red button first, which yeah. is turning on the camera. And yeah. then the blue button turns on the servos. Okay. So it looks, it starts looking around as soon as it turns on. And when it sees a person, it'll either play a note and these little LEDs light up. Oh, can they stand in front of it? Sure. All right, let's do this. Let's see if it actually sees you. I'm not sure about to clean the lens off or not. Well, the lens looks pretty clean. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it saw you on that one. That's why I was like looking in that area right now. And funny thing about it, if I turn on the sound effects, Ooh. It has sound effects when it sees a person too. Let me just detecting higher levels of CO2. Adjusting. <laughs> so my friend did the voice lines, adjusting. but it literally waits till it sees a person and then it'll play a voice line. But that. the voice the voice lines are kind of long because I realized you, I had to make them longer than I wanted to just to give it more character. Oh, okay. So I went to Red Fair and that one was the most popular. What does it say? Give me more alcohol? <laughs> Scanning for alcohol. Scanning for alcohol. <laughs> Alcohol detected. I can imagine that that was a hit at the Red Fair. <laughs> yeah, it was It was definitely one of the most popular ones. Can we talk about the aesthetics? Because it is really cute, but it also is like a cute version of the Imperial droid from Empire. You know, the funny thing about that, I was definitely inspired by Star Wars when it comes to this. Because like, of course, you would know this. I love Star Wars designs on their robots because they're so detailed. Yeah. They're so beautiful. Um, could I give you a little feedback that of course. I see from your aesthetic? I really appreciate um, how restrained you are with the aesthetic additions. Mm -hmm. Like, it is easy with the access to a 3D printer to take a surface like this and add all sorts of surface mm -hmm. detail to it, but you've really held the aesthetics to functionality and then you've added some here and there for balance. But again, I, I think you show a lot of restraint and it makes, the, it makes these things feel much more real to me. Yeah. I mean, I've, the thing about adding so much to it and stuff is, of course, I'm always thinking about weight, but I'm also thinking, of course, I think about aesthetic, but it's also the issue of things breaking off, things sure. getting stuck. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like I said, you don't want to overcomplicate. Yeah. I see. Okay, that makes total sense. I think it was Leonardo da Vinci who said that there's um, <laughs> genius in simplicity. Yeah. We have this autobiography in objects here, and I'm curious, whenever I have occasion to talk about my work and I get to look at uh, 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 a couple of years of it or several, you know, a couple of decades of it in front of me, I feel like I get interesting perspective. And I'm curious right now if you're getting a perspective on the arc of your work thus far. Honestly, yes, but in a very beautiful way. Because like, of course, I went to art schools. So I didn't learn how to 3D design or anything like that. All this is self-taught. I literally got a whole bunch of books, YouTube videos, and I just kept swinging at it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's funny because I technically started, I want to say, making stuff six years, but I've only taken it seriously the last four years. Yeah. And I'm here. I yeah, mean, yeah, like, that's lovely. That is really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, yeah, I, I totally appreciate that. You're seeing the, the arc of the, uh, you're talking to past you and be like, you have no idea how cool it gets. Yeah, like it's definitely one of those moments if I saw a young me, I'd be like, keep going. You have no idea how cool things go. Jay, I, I have some idea how cool things can get and I can't, cannot wait to sit here again in a couple of years and see more of your work. We, we've got a collaboration oh, working yes, on yes, now. Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Dude, it is really, really inspiring to see this. Thank you so much oh, for bringing you. it here for and, me. and uh, letting your bots run free in the cave. Oh, trust me, next time I come, I'm hoping to have a lot more of them actually running around. Uh, excellent. <laughs> That's as it should be. All right, thanks, you guys. I will, uh, I will see, we will see, see you next time.
Jorvan's robots are so beautiful and so full of personality, but it is his interactions with them that really makes it sing for me. If you'd like to see this even closer, well, you're in luck because we also filmed this in virtual reality as part of our Tested VR series. You can watch it right now either in the Tested VR app or on MetaQuest TV. Links and instructions are in the description below. Thank you guys for watching.